Okay, so we're up to Parashas Bamidbar. So chapter 1, verse 1. Vayidaber Hashem al Moshe v'mibar Sinai. Oh, you're looking at the wrong book there. You got to get the Chumash Moshe. No, 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 no. Go get the Chumash Moshe. Vayidaber Hashem al Moshe v'mibar Sinai. God spoke to Moshe in the Sinai wilderness. We're in... Um, it's no, the book of Bamidbar, chapter 1. We're up to the fourth book of the Torah, Bamidbar. Bamidbar chapter one, Numbers chapter one. One verse one. Um, still can't hear me, Rabbi Yosef? No, but I'm I'm listening on my phone that way. I can hear you. And... Oh, you hear me on your phone, so that means it's not me, it's you. Right. Right. Here in Baruch Hashem. Okay, so chapter one, chap, Numbers chapter one, verse one. By Dabra Hashem Moshe, so God spoke to Moshe in Midbar Sinai, in the in the Sinai wilderness, the Moed in the uh, tent of the meeting, the in the first day of the second month, in the second year, let's say some years, which I am, the second year from which they left Egypt, saying. So basically, we're in year two. And we're in the first day of the second month. That's ER, the same month that we're in now. But this was the second year. So this was back in the time we left Egypt. So we're Numbers chapter 1, verse 1, 8, 10. So let's see what Rashi says here. Rashi says, hey, hey, hey. Oh, I got a new look there. You got a new look. We like it. <laughs> All right. So Rashi says, God spoke to Moses in the Sinai wilderness, in the first day of the month. So the basic question Rashi is bothered by is, why does Hashem need to keep counting them? Because he's about to tell, hello, Aviva, hello, Mordechai. Oh, beautiful, thank you. No, no, you could sit there, of course. So bad. Okay, well, we're so honored that you want to hear more. So it says, thank you, Aviva Mordechai. Baruch Hashem. So God spoke to Moshe in the Sinai wilderness in the second year, but in the in the second month, on the first day of the month. But the basic question is, why is Hashem going to tell Moshe to count the Jewish people when they just were counted? We just did a census. Even in America, we only do a census every 10, 10 years. Why are they doing another census here? They were just counted after the golden calf and when they left Egypt. So they've been counted twice within the last year. Why are they being counted again? Three times in one year. That's the basic question. So Rashi answers, why? Because he loves them so much, he counts them all the time. It's like a person who has a lot of money. What does he sit there around noon all day? Oh, let me look at my portfolio and count how much money I have. It makes me feel good. I wouldn't know, but I'm just saying that that's what they do. That that's the people, they start to count their money. They play with silver dollars. You know, they count their money. They're very happy. Walk around with cash, peel it off like a boss. You know what I'm saying, Moshe? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah. What? Ramban has something to say. Ramban? Yeah, what does he have to say? He says it's like, it's not exactly counting, it's like turning attention to. So it's saying that Hashem is like, he has something else about uh, David getting in trouble for counting people in a sense that's in power. That's yesterday. Yeah. Um, it's, it's prohibited to count the way David counted. We have to know how to count. So he, first of all, maybe he counted for the wrong reason. And also he didn't count through a third party. Like we count with the coins. We count in a, uh, we don't count directly, we count the coins. So David counted in the wrong manner and he counted just to show his greatness, not not with humility. So those are so, two of the problems. Yeah. Yeah, he's basically saying that because it's not, it's not really commandments to count, it's to turn Moshe's attention to and be mindful of it. Okay, very nice. So now let's see what Rashi says. Yeah, Shakoach, let's see what Rashi says. Rashi says, because he loves them, he counts them. 
When he left Egypt, he counted them. When they fell to golden calf, he counted them. To know how many were left. And when he came to rest his divine presence upon them, he counted them again. So what's going on chronologically? He's just built the Mishkan one month earlier. The Mishkan was established. And now he's going to count them again. He's going to count them. Uh, so why didn't he count them right when he put it up? Why did he wait 30 days? Because in Halakha, a dwelling place is considered permanent only after it's been inhabited for 30 days. Only after Hashem demonstrated his love for Ibn Israel by showing that he had made the tabernacle his permanent home, did he count them. Okay. And it says, verse, yes, Akiva. Why is it called a I don't know. That's a good question. Let's see what the way. I guess I'm not saying. Let's just see. Let's just look up the word tabernacle. The tabernacle is tent of the congregation. But where is the origin of the word tabernacle? Well, that's what you're asking about. Okay, origin of the word tabernacle. I don't know. Let's see. Uh, so etymology of tabernacle here. The word tabernacle. It means it's a mid 13th century word uh, that means portable sanctuary. But that's what Mishkan is. It's the old French tabernacle, means a tent, a canopy, or a, a tomb or a monument. From the Latin tabernaculum, which means tent, especially a tent of an augur for taking observations. So a tabernaculum is a large tent. The sense of the word in English, English shifted by late 14th century. The temple in Jerusalem. Also, biblical language, the body as a temporary abode of the soul. As the name, they used it for a name for the receptacle for the Eucharist. The sense of house of worship is by 1690s. Okay. Can you also read the well, that's just make like a canopy or covered with a canopy. Okay, so basically, the original word was a tent and a mishkan was a tent. And then it started to develop into the word for the sanctuary. Okay, so now, thank you, Akiva. You brought value, added value to our discussion. Shkoyach. So now the verse says, L'mishpecho, the next verse says, rosh kodas b'nei Israel. Lift up, count the heads of the whole congregation of Israel. L'mishpecho tam, according to their families. L'beit avotam, to their father's home. B'mispar shimot. By the names of, by the number of the names, Kol Zachar Gogotam, every male, according to their head count. Okay, every male according to their head count. So, so what does this mean? Umishpechotam, count them according to their families. Rashi says, minyan kol sheva sheva. We want to know the number for each tribe. Obey Tavotam, what does it mean? Uh, father's house. How do you count the census? We have to know the census of each tribe. So one, the father's from tribe of one tribe and the mother's from a different tribe. How do you count? You count after the father. Every male according to their head. Rashi says, You count the coins. Everybody has to give the half shekel. It's a half shackle per head. This is called the head count. But not by the actual head count because the Hashem had said back in Exodus chapter 30, verse 12, that you have to do a half shekel. So we don't count with the actual head, we do with the half shekel. Miben is from Shana from 20 years old and up, call Yotzei Tzavabi Yisrael, whoever went out to do service, if could do Otam, but Sivosam, you shall count them according to their army, Atav Aaron, you and Aaron. 
So that's what it is. From 20 years old and up, whoever goes out into the army, you count them according to their service, you and Aaron. You only counted the uh, only counted the men, and in this sense, it's only counting between the ages of twenty and sixty. The Levites were counted from one month all up and up. That's later, but right here, only the men from the ages of twenty to sixty were counted, because it's all those who went into service. And this tells us, Rashi says, You don't go into service, and, and Rashi understands this to mean the army, until you're the age of 20. Did the Levites start serving the temple? Um, the, ages, but... the Levites served um, from the ages of 25 to 50. So why were they counted? Then? Because... They their task, I guess their task, they weren't counted based upon going into the army. They had a, they, at this point the only Kohanim were Aaron and then his sons, Nadav and Navio, who were killed, and Elazar and Itamar. So it was a pretty quick count. Well, yeah, they were part of the Levi tribe, so there's no Kohan. So there were they weren't there yet. They weren't. Yeah, they're going to be counted with no, with the Levites, with the Levites. At this point, yeah, that's why Pinchas had to be given a special gift of being a Kohen. That's why after he killed um, Zimri, uh, um, Cosby, he was given a special. Yeah. Well, Pelchus was the grandson, but right, only that point. Okay, so now we say, from, oh, we just did that. Verse 4, and we'll be with you. With you shall be one man from each tribe. When you do this count, so now we're getting something else. When you do the count, you'll have one man next to you from each tribe. A man who was a prince in his father's house. Rashi says, When you count them, you have to be with you, the prince of each tribe. So now we see they're standing, and Aaron is standing with the prince. Not Aaron, Moshe is standing with the prince next to him. To give it, what's the purpose of that? To give it importance, to give it more validity. You know, everybody, because it's a lot riding on the census. They're going to make certain decisions based upon the census. So you want to make sure that it's people to this day don't trust the, cens uh, the censuses. I mean, I don't know how the portal of census really it should be censi. It should be if you follow by the Latin. Sometimes they put it into English and there will be censuses. But the portal in Latin will be assumed would be sensi. Sensi, sensi. What? Yeah, well, that's our second Latin word for the day. Tabernaculum and census. Okay. The Ela Shemo Sa'an Hashem. These are the names of the men. Asher Yamdu Yitzchem, which will stand with you. We're Ruvain Elitzur Ben Shteyor. From the tribe of Ruvain Elitzur. We're Shemo and Shlumiel Ben Suri Shaddai. We're Yehuda and Nachshom Ben Amin And they are not... Um, uh, these are the people, verse 16, these are the ones summoned by the assembly. These are the ones summoned by the assembly. What does that mean they're summoned by the assembly? Seth, how you doing? We're eating well this weekend, thanks to you. <laughs> so these are the people who are Kiruye Aida. By the way, this is another example of what's called a Kriuk Siv. It's written Kriye, but we read it as Kruye. So we were asking where are there are other examples of Kriyaksiv. So these are the summoned ones of the assembly. 
the princes of their fathers, Rashe al Fay Israel Haim. We're in verse 16 of chapter one of the Midbar. What does this mean, Rashi says? These, the ones who were standing, these ones who were standing next to Moshe as he was doing the census, they were the ones who were summoned for every matter of importance in the assembly. Meaning to say, it doesn't mean when they were summoned, it doesn't mean that they were at the beck and call. It means that they that they were regular that they were called when something important was being discussed. Okay. Moshe Aaron. Moshe and Aaron took these men, except also in case you didn't hear, tomorrow night we're not going to be here because I'm driving up, God willing, to return, to bring in the Torah scroll, to deliver it, uh, to be checked, and picking up this uh, last Torah I finished. So that'll be in the, uh, that'll be hopefully stored here. So Moshe and Aaron, uh, they took these men, Asher Nikfu Beshemot, who have been designated by their name. Raj says, Shneema Sarnasim these 12 princes. That's who these men refers to. And then it says, Asher Nikfu, Lokan Beshemot. They were designated here by their names. Okay, now, the Ace Koaida, this is a very interesting Rashi, very, very interesting Rashi. Every, the entire community gathered on the first day of the second month. And they were, there was this genealogy established according to their families in their father's house, the Mispar Shemos, by the number of names. So every the whole community gathered and they were established by their families and their father's homes. What does this mean? Rashi said something, it's just incredible. The source for this is, I believe from the Gemara, although it doesn't list here the source, but Rashi says, He views Sifrei Yehusayhem, the Eide Chaskasle de Asam, Ko Echa Ve Echad, Shevet. They brought they brought the documents of lineage and the witnesses to the status of their birth, each and every one of them, so to trace his ancestry to the tribe to which he belonged. So it wasn't just, you couldn't just, just like show up and say, this is the tribe I'm from. You had to bring a book documenting your lineage. How are they going to document it? They were slaves in Egypt. And also, they had to bring witnesses that, that say that they were born from there. They had to have evidence to get into this tribe. There's a lot of money at stake. Because if you were in this tribe, when you entered in the land of Israel, you were given land forever. So they're not just going to let anybody claim it. You had to prove who you were. So only a small fraction of people being that of the tribe. Um, and who's to say that those people would be able to validate that tribe? So it seems like a process that was fraught with not a lot of detail. And how do you even keep, like you said, the documentation? Yeah, are they going to have documents? And slaves, who's everything. Uh, yeah, I'm sure. He says that he doesn't make any sense to take documentation for this kind of thing. Right. He says that it's it's only saying that they separated themselves from the non Jews, but also just them that they're not each other. So that's what I mean. They were Ezra says that there was documentation, but it wasn't about the tribal affiliation, it was about when they were born to establish them and they were actually coming. Okay, so that that makes also sense. That's fine. You have to have witnesses when you were born. But um Yeah, they had they had ways of writing. Clearly, they wrote the Torah, but to assume that all these slaves had birth records documenting who their father was, and you know, like they didn't have birth certificates, but here it seems to be saying that they did. And then presumably they had to take these social security documents as they're leaving Egypt. <laughs> I don't know. They had these documents. But then the Egyptians, like, right? You're right. They, 
as a news of uh, people who are quite unmanaged uh, and have that kind of emotional yeah, so they must have. Rashi says they did, so they did. I mean, if Rashi yeah, says it, it's got to be true. If Rashi says it, it must be true. So that's it. So now we go on. It says, Kasher Tivar Hashem as Moshe, just like God commanded Moshe, and they were counted in the Sinai wilderness. And then it goes through all the lineage, and uh, you can see Chai of Ruben was 46,500. Yes, sir. Guy, if there were counting like other signs and there was like people doing them or in the Jew, where did they classify them? Right, if wow. you, it, they didn't have uh, they weren't we know that they weren't able to pitch their tent with the tribes, they had to pitch their tent outside the tribes. The tribes' tent, they had to be in the tribe to pitch your tent. That's uh, so we we learned that in uh, uh, a few weeks ago that the that the um, that the there was a man whose father was Egyptian. His mother was was Shlomis Batevri from the tribe of Dan, and he was not able to pitch his tent there. The court ruling was against him pitching his tent there. So he had to pitch his tent outside of the tribe, and he would not have gotten a portion in the land and an inheritance. It was had to be one who was part of the tribes when they left Egypt. He had complex papers if they kept it. The father was not from the tribe. Right, right. So, and yeah. He had... mother, none of them made it to the land. What? None of them made it to the land. They didn't make it to the land, but their children right. did, and their basis. And the, we said, and Rashi tells us that when they inherit the land, it goes back to how many there were when they left Egypt. So, yeah, it's very relevant to see who's going to inherit the land. Only those people who can be traced back to Egypt, part of the Exodus, forget the land. So, okay. So now we say as follows. We're going to skip a little bit because it just goes through the number of each tribe. But it is interesting to see, in case people don't recognize this, that the tribe of Reuven was 46,500. The tribe of Shimon was 59,300. God was 45,650. Judah was 74,600, significantly more. The tribe of Yisachar was 54,400. Zavuin, 57,400. Menashe, 40,500. But that's because Joseph was split into two. And Menashe was 32,200. So if you count the tribes of Joseph and Judah, they're significantly more than everybody else. And Benjamin was the smallest, 35,400. And the tribe of Dan was 62,700. And Asher was 41,500. And Naphtali, 53,400. So the two tribes were... Where clearly the two biggest tribes are the ones who are going to fight throughout history, the tribes of Joseph and Judah. Ephraim was going to have the northern kingdom, and Judah was going to have the southern kingdom throughout history. So, okay. Then it says, Elah, verse 44. Pakan Moshe Aaron Israel. This is the count that Moshe and Aaron counted, the princes of Israel. Shnemasar Ish, Ish Echarabetavatavayu. Twelve men. One man for his father's house were they. Ayu kol pekude b'nei Yisrael beit avatam. The whole count of all the children of Israel for the father's house. We ben Yisrael shana v'mala from twenty years on up. Kol yutei tzeva b'Yisrael. And what was the total count? Ayu kol pekudim. The whole count was. The whole count was. Sheish. Meos elf six hundred thousand. Shlosha salafim three thousand. Hamish meos v'chamishin. 603,550. Okay. And the Levites, oh, us, the Levites were not counted amongst them. We saw that. That was what we discussed earlier. Uh, so now verse 48. The tribe of Levi do not count. And their heads you shall not count amongst the children of Israel. Do not count them. Let's see what Rashi says. Rashi says, Tribe of Levi, Kedayu Ligion Shal Melech, Rashi says, Don't count them. Why? Somebody asked the question, Why were the Levites not counted? Because they were the legion of the king. They were the special legion of the king. And so, therefore, since they're the special legion of the king, 
they're not counted with everyone else. Alternatively, why is another reason why they weren't counted with everyone? In the future, God saw that there was going to be a decree against everyone who was counted from 20 years old and up, that they would die in the wilderness. So therefore, Hashem said, Let not these Levites be included. The Levites are mine. They didn't sin with the golden calf. So the Levites uh, were not included in the decree uh, that all were counted would not enter into the land. For this reason, Hashem didn't want to count the Levites. So the two reasons why the Levites weren't counted amongst them, reason number one is because the Levites were special. God wanted to mark them as special by not counting them. Number two, God wanted to shield them from the decree later on. Everybody follow this? Verse 50. Now you shall count the Levites on the Mishkan of the tabernacle of the tes- testimony. You know, actually, let me just stop the recording here for a moment. We'll pick up this Pasuk again on Tuesday, but I want to tell everybody something because I see Nathan here.